Hello, Abraxas here, and we're playing some Universe Sandbox 2, so my throat is doing a lot better today, as you guys can probably tell. My nose is a bit stuffed up, but that's fine. I have a suggestion from Omega Wolf 747 asking me to replace the sun with UI Skatai, or is it? No. VY Canis Majoris, my bad. It is a more massive star than UI Skatai, so it would actually have a better influence on it. But I think I'm going to do one better than that. So let's open my performance simulation, which should be right over here. Named solar system performance, no Kuiper belt. And there's no Pluto, so let's go ahead and just add in Pluto. Uh, I don't know the exact distance that Pluto sits, so I'm just going to put it like right here past uh, Neptune, roughly. So let's go ahead and zoom in here, and let's go ahead and... Okay, the simulation's already paused. So what I'm going to do is... I've already done... I've already replaced the sun with Canis Majoris. Uh, if you check one of my very first... Universe Sandbox 2 videos, you could actually find two videos. I have two videos where I replace sun, the sun with stars of similar mass, and then one where I just replaced it with popular stars. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the sun, noting where its position is. Not that it's too important, given the star I'm going to be replacing it with. And I think one of these stars, ah uh, yes, R136A1, if I'm correct is the most massive star that's actually available in the game. The rest of these are larger and all that, but they are not actually more massive. Now if we look at something like, uh, where is VY? Okay, there's Canis Majoris, which is equ equivalent to 17 suns. And we have UI Skatai, which is 8 suns. Of course, the radius UI Skatai is larger, but that's also because it's less dense. We have this over here, which is equivalent to 260 suns. So, significantly more massive. Let's just see what happens if I place this. Oh, it's actually quite a bit bigger than I thought it would be. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, UI Skatai is definitely bigger than that though. If we grab UI Skatai or Canis Majoris. Here's Canis Majoris, much bigger. Oh. And then we have UI Skatai, which is even less dense, but is even bigger than Canis Majoris, which it basically engulfs everything up to Saturn. This one might be a fun contender, because I think this is just going to pull the entire solar system in, and all these outer planets are probably going to just slingshot outwards. So let's watch what happens if I do this. this might be the only video I upload today, because I'm going to be quite busy. I've been busy all morning, I had to go shopping and all that, so that's a thing. Uh, running a little bit low on suggestions. I'm getting a lot of suggestions asking me to terraform stuff and do binary orbits. Uh, I've explained in past videos, I don't really do those. Uh, please do not suggest me things that are like binary orbits or uh, suggestions for like terraforming. If you guys want to see some awesome terraforming videos, I recommend going to Anton Petrov's channel. He has a whole series on that. And they go into much more detail than even I could even fathom, so I would definitely check those out. They're way more educational, way better than anything I'd produce when it comes to terraforming. Because he goes in all, all the gritty details. Me, I'm just going to throw water on it and be like, yep, there you go, terraformable. <laughs> Even though, yeah, obviously, there's things like atmospheric pressure and all that, and all, all the other values that, you know, are slightly important to actually surviving. But I digress. Well, okay, so, no more rambling. Let's see what happens. Let's make it... Let's go for about five hours per second. And here we go. Okay, maybe that was a little bit slow. Well, let's see what's happening to the inner planets here. Oh, it's not even playing. There we go. Oh, they all start cooking away. And there goes Venus, straight into the star. And Venus immediately is gone. Okay, so let's speed up time a little bit and see how these things travel. Oh, all the inner planets just vaporized right away. Let's uh, view the uh, zones for this star. Oh, wow. Okay, nothing is habitable. It's all going to burn away. Pluto's not going to make it, that's for sure. Oh, what's that? Here comes Jupiter. It's going to go right into the star. It might even make it go Nova. Oh, it doesn't look like it destabilized it. Here comes Saturn. Straight into the star. The question is, are any of these planets actually going to slingshot, or are they all just diving straight into the star? Because I know if I place Canis Majoris or UI Skatai, they would sling a few of these planets would at least slingshot out, but no, it looks like this thing's so massive 
it's basically just pulling them right in. Oh, there goes Neptune. It's slingshotted out. And away it goes. At an incredibly fast rate. Oh, Pluto vaporized quite a bit and then went flying. It's actually a comet. Oh, but it didn't go flying far enough. I think it's actually going to flip around. It's a very eccentric orbit. I noticed the star is actually moving. I think Jupiter might have had influence on it, but I don't know. I didn't throw the star. I placed it as a still object, so... No, I might have actually placed that as an orbiting body. Yeah, I did. So I placed it as orbiting around Jupiter. But here comes Pluto again. Probably going to end it this time. Oh, Pluto is just a ball of gas now. Yep, it's just a little ball of plasma. And every time it passes, it just gets a little bit more vaporized. So, Pluto. There is the end of Pluto. And there you go. That's what happens if uh, the solar system... Or if R13, R136A1 replaced the sun. And Neptune is just flying away to become an even colder gas giant. So... Goodbye, Neptune. Okay, let's run this one one more time. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and load this system again. And let's just replace it with Canis Majoris. Do the original suggestion. Let's just see what happens if, uh, if there's actually a major difference between this and the uh, older version. So oh, here we go, Canis Majoris. As I said, it's not too important where I place this. It's going to consume all these planets. So that just leaves us basically with Saturn and uh, Neptune and Uranus. So there we go. Saturn, I think it's just going to fall right in. Let's see what happens. Maybe Jupiter will might actually might destabilize the star, make it go supernova. Because in the previous version, it didn't do that. It just deleted Jupiter. But now, there might be a difference. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and slow down time a little bit. And let's hit play. Nope. Doesn't look like it destabilized the star at all. Okay, let's speed up time. I placed it as an orbiting object again. Whoops. <laughs> so, we actually have uh, Canis Majoris drifting through the solar system. But too fast. Hmm. Let's view the orbits. Oh, okay. That's actually not that bad. That Those might be... Oh, wait. Uranus is gonna... I think it's gonna meet an unfortunate fate. Oh, just barely scraped by the star. <laughs> oh, wow. So it looks like it stabilized mainly because it was drifting. I think uh, if it was a still object, they all would have just fell in. Let's see. Let's get rid of this again. And place Canis Majoris as a still object. Not make that same mistake again. And drop it right there. So here we go. Yeah. I think it being a moving object actually saved the uh, solar system, or at least the outer solar system, but as a still object, they all just fell right in. So there you go. That's what happens if you place Canis Majoris in, in like the position of the sun. So anyways, if you guys like the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help. And do leave me some suggestions down in the comments below, I will go through them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.